Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, November 30th, 2020. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word as God uses his word to strengthen our faith in him and increase our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our savior. November 30th is the day on which we remember St. Andrew the Apostle. St. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was born in the Galilean village of Bethsaida. Originally a disciple of St. John the Baptist, Andrew then became the first of Jesus' disciples. His name regularly appears in the Gospels near the top of the lists of the Twelve. It was he who first introduced his brother Simon to Jesus. He was, in a real sense, the first home missionary, as well as the first foreign missionary. Tradition says Andrew was martyred by crucifixion on a cross in the form of an X. In AD 357, his body is said to have been taken to the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople, and later removed to the Cathedral of Amalfi in Italy. Centuries later, Andrew became the patron saint of Scotland. St. Andrew's Day determines the beginning of the Western Church year, since the first Sunday in Advent is always the Sunday nearest to St. Andrew's Day. Our psalm for today is Psalm 123. I lift my eyes to you, the one enthroned in heaven, like a servant's eyes on his master's hand, like a servant girl's eyes on his mistress's hand, or on her mistress's hand. So our eyes are on the Lord our God until he shows us favor. Show us favor, Lord, show us favor, for we've had more than enough contempt. We've had more than enough scorn from the arrogant and contempt from the proud. Many times in the uh, books of the prophets, they begin their book with an account of how the Lord called them to their ministry. Isaiah doesn't recall or doesn't recount the, his call into the ministry until chapter six of his uh, prophecy. But today we are going to read chapter six and a portion of chapter seven as we see the Lord call Isaiah to his ministry and send Isaiah with a message to the king of Judah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphim were standing above him. They each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the doorways shook at the sound of their voices, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips, and because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord asking, who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. And he replied, go, say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Make the minds of these people dull, deafen their ears and blind their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their minds, turn back and be healed. Then I said, until when, Lord? And he replied, until cities lie in ruins without inhabitants, houses are without people, the land is ruined and desolate, and the Lord drives the people far away, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tenth will remain in the land, it will be burned again like the terebinth or the oak that leaves a stump when felled. The holy seed is the stump. This took place during the reign of King Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah. Aram's king Rezin and Israel's king Pekah, son of Remaliah, went to fight against Jerusalem, but they were not able to conquer it. When it became known to the house of David that Aram had occupied Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the hearts of his people trembled like trees of a forest shaking in the wind. The Lord said to Isaiah, go out with your son Sheir Yashub, 
to meet Ahaz at the end of the conduit of the upper pool by the road to the launderer's field. Say to him, calm down and be quiet. Don't be afraid or cowardly because of these two smoldering wicks, the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and the son of Remaliah. For Aram, along with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah, has plotted harm against you. They say, let's go up against Judah, terrorize it and conquer it for ourselves. Then we can install Tabil's son as king in it. This is what the Lord God says. It will not happen. It will not occur. The chief city of Aram is Damascus. The chief of Damascus is Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The chief city of Ephraim is Samaria, and the chief of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you do not stand firm in your faith, then you will not stand at all. We continue reading in chapter two of Peter's first letter as he encourages us in whatever station of life we are in to submit to the authority of those whom God has placed over us. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do what is evil and to praise those who do what is good. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. Submit as free people, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but as God's slaves. Honor everyone. Love the brothers and sisters. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Household slaves, submit to your masters with all reverence, not only to the good and gentle ones, but also to the cruel. For it brings favor if, because of a consciousness of God, Someone endures grief from suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if when you do wrong, if when you do wrong and are beaten, you endure it? But when you do what is good and suffer, if you endure it, this brings favor with God. For you were called to this, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. He did not commit sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Our theological writing today comes from the historian Valerius Herberger, as he tells us more about St. Andrew. Reverend hearts, we hold the feast of the Apostle Andrew in Christendom as the first in the church year, not only because it falls near the season of Advent, but also because Andrew was called first, before the other apostles, by the Lord Jesus. Even Durandus, the Bishop of Mendy, says, the saints are to be honored by imitation, not adored, as if to honor them as gods. They are to be honored with love, not adored with servitude. Now history tells us how St. Andrew together with his fellows conducted their new office. Right away they left their nets and followed the Lord Jesus. And again, right away they left the ship and their father and followed him. To them, Jesus is now the most precious one on earth. According to his mind, they learn. According to his words, they teach. According to his will, they live. According to his decree, they suffer and die. When St. Andrew was threatened with the cross, he said joyfully, if I feared the punishment of the cross, I would never have preached the mystery of the cross. Then when he saw the cross, he spoke, hail, precious cross, you who were dedicated by the body of Christ. May he receive me through you who redeemed me through you. When he was living after three days on the cross, his hearers wanted to take him down by force, but he said, Ah, let God take care of it. Do not make the peace of the gospel suspect by your unnecessary necessary revolt against the government. That was apostolic constancy and long suffering. This is what it means to leave everything and follow Christ all the way to the last catch of fish. Our hymn is a stanza from the hymn, Jesus Lead Thou On. When we seek relief from a long felt grief, when temptations come alluring, make us patient and enduring. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. And we pray. 
Almighty God, by your grace, the Apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Jesus Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. What a pleasure it was to be able to spend this time together in God's word with you today. May God richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.